It's hard to convey the scale of the destruction. Lebanon is suffering from a collapse of epic proportions. In the grips of one of the world's worst financial crises since the 1800s. Food, fuel and medicine are scarce. The currency has crashed. Prices have soared. People have been left with nothing. We are witnessing, I think, uh, the heist of the century, the theft of the century. What's been stolen? People's future has been stolen, but uh, more importantly, their, uh, their means to survive. Okay, it's so dark. Okay, our main problem here in this unit is that we don't have spare parts for the light. Okay. Lebanon's main public hospital is barely running. It's been affected by the crisis in every way. But he's here since two days. Since two days. Because not availability. Most people can no longer afford to pay for private health care, and so the public hospitals are overrun. A cancer patient has been admitted overnight. He's been unable to find his chemotherapy medication for six months. And now doctors say he's going to die. Look how much I need I have. In the pharmacy, the cupboards are bare. This is another one. This is so Medicines so are subsidized by the government and the government's fallen behind on its payments. I have problems. This is unbelievable. Yes. Is this the lowest you've ever had your stocks go? Yes. Yes, yes. And I have been working here for 16 years. Last week, a woman came, she was pregnant. She, was, uh, she had preeclampsia, which is uh, hypertension in pregnancy. And she lost her baby because we don't have magnesium. Had magnesium cost like two, three cents. It's the same story for electricity. Huge power shortages are forcing the country and the hospital to run on generators. The day before uh, yesterday, we ran on 30, 30 hours on, on generators. 30 hours? Not 30 not. hours complete on generators. Is that dangerous? Of course. It's a risk. The cost of a generator bill is now more than many earn in a month, leaving Halima to rely on the grid. She's lucky if she gets more than a few hours of power before work stops for the day. Every day people queue for hours, desperate to secure some of the little fuel that's left. As it runs out, tempers flare. These problems are compounding as the currency plunges. Lebanon's official currency is pegged to the dollar, but a black market has emerged. Cash is traded on the streets for less than 10% of what it should be worth. So it's just cost me 20,000 Lebanese pounds to buy this single dollar. To give you an indication of how quickly this currency is depreciating, two weeks ago it cost me 15,000 Lebanese pounds. So every day this currency is losing value and every day people are getting poorer. Savings and salaries have been reduced to almost nothing. This camp, established in Beirut more than 50 years ago, is home to the city's Palestinian refugees. But now Lebanese families, who've lost everything, have started moving in. Bassam brought his wife, son and twin daughters here after losing his job as a taxi driver. The 
يعني خيارين ما في غيرهم يا بدي اجيبهم لهون يا بدي اقعدهم بالشارع بس يمكن لو قعدتهم بالشارع كان شوي ارحم ايه ايه عم بقول لك هاي هون الحمام وهون وين الحمام وهيدا هو المطبخ كله بس هون مجلة ما في ما في مجلة بجلي هون على أربعة It's estimated that more than half of people in Lebanon can no longer afford enough food. ما في نلوم إلا الدولة يعني مين بتأكلون؟ أنا أرتب نصابين حراميين. The deadly explosion at the port of Beirut last year and the pandemic have only deepened this already epic crisis, fueled by decades of corruption and mismanagement. Nearly a year on, the city is still in tatters and the country is without a government. Bickering politicians are unable to agree a new cabinet, leaving the country to freefall. Frustration spills out onto the streets. A small group of protesters block roads. These flare-ups happen every few weeks. We just heard there some, some live ammunition. They show how volatile the situation is here. They show how angry people are. And they show the instability that people in Lebanon are having to live with. But the energy of the mass protests which swept the country in 2019 has ebbed away. Um, I like to chant a lot and uh, scream a lot. And What were you chanting? <laughs> Mostly Thawra, which means the revolution. Aline has been protesting against the establishment here for 30 years. Why are people not out here again in their masses on the streets? The Beirut blast to me was a major um, turning point that has left people um, anxious and depressed. The, the Lebanese people are, are not well. We need to understand this. We don't feel well. Who do you blame for this? I definitely blame the establishment. They have had no economic and financial strategy for this country for decades, for decades. They have been systemically and structurally uh, leading us to this point. Back at the hospital, one of the nurses is asking to be transferred to another hospital in the countryside. <laughs> صعب الحياة صارت المصاريف زايدة أجرات البيون الوقت عم منيح رجع الضيعة أفضل. Her monthly salary, once worth 800 pounds, is now worth less than 50. You don't want to leave. أنت زعلانة ما بدك تفلي. كت. عشرة عمر أنا عم أضيع هون بالمستشفى. بيت الثاني هون بالمستشفى. She joins the 40 nurses who've left this hospital in the past two months. Most have left the country. Okay, shut off of the... We've just lost the electricity. Yes. <laughs> For years, Lebanon has been on the brink of collapse. No more. Its day has come. And as it enters another night of darkness, many fear it has far further to fall. That was Jean McKenzie. And uh, before we hear from the former government, we'll go back to Gabriel. Um, put it in the political context of where we are now, this new prime minister as of yesterday, will that make any difference? Yeah, um, Najib Mikati, who was nominated yesterday, is a businessman. He comes in after an effective power vacuum following that port explosion last year. Look, if he actually manages to form a government, um, we might see international aid coming back in. We might see some help coming back in. Um, from the IMF, which will probably alleviate some of the worst of, of those effects that you saw in Gene's film there. But at most, he'll be plugging holes in a sinking ship. You heard that um, activist there saying that the, this system 
the establishment has been, I think she said, systemically and structurally leading us to this point for decades. Um, the interesting thing about Lebanon is that the sectarian leaders spend most of their time politically at odds with each other, quabbling over cabinet positions, who controls what ministry, etc. But when the system itself is threatened, as it was in 2019 when these protests started and people came out united, cross-sectarian, to demand change, the politicians all closed ranks. Mm. They put the military and the militias out on the street. The system protects itself, Emily. But the, the irony is that in order to save this ship, the system needs to change. Gabriel, thank you very much. Well, earlier I spoke to one of those party leaders, Gabriel Basile. He was the focus of much of the anger that Gabriel was just referring to during the protests of 2019. Former minister, now the leader of one of Lebanon's biggest political parties, the Free Patriotic Movement, and he's also the son-in-law of Lebanon's President Michel Aoun, himself one of the key figures in the civil war. Well, I started by asking Jebran Basile why the country was in such chaos. We came 10 years ago to the government where there was no electricity, where the country was in total debt and collapse, and we were working to put plans for electricity, for water, for oil and gas, and to restructure the debt. But we are a minority uh, in the government and in the parliament, and they are the majority. So we were not really able to succeed in our plans of reforms. We are facing a whole corrupt class of politicians who want to deprive the people from their rights and electricity and water. I believe you are part of that class. And I'm going to quote from the former Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, as well, who said the systemic corruption in Lebanon's political system, exemplified by Basil, has helped to erode the foundation of an effective government that serves the Lebanese people. This lies with you. You can't blame other people. You were in government. The description by the, by the U.S. Secretary of Treasury is a political one. It was only based on our understanding with Hezbollah. Well, you have worked with Hezbollah. I mean, they're part of the militia. They are the militia. And you work alongside Hezbollah. We are dealing with Hezbollah as being part of the Lebanese population and part of the Lebanese system. And we have to deal with everybody because Hezbollah and Amal, they represent the Shias, and others represent the Sunnis, and others represent the Druze, and some of us represent the Christians and other, and other sects of the country. But this does not mean that we agree with Hezbollah or other parties. Let me remind you of the port explosion, another example of corruption, mismanagement, thousands of tons of dangerous chemicals, abandoned in a place where they were unsafe, 200 people killed, thousands left homeless. This was because of the way that that structure of government was working. Yeah, the, the people are right to be angry, of course. And one can understand that they are angry from everybody. But this type of generalization doesn't really help, not only to distinguish between the honest and the reformist people and the corrupt ones, but also to make the difference, to put the effort and the pressure on those who are corrupt and to make them change at least their, their policies. There are rumours that you want to stand for president next year. Can you confirm that? No, I have uh, no plans for that. I, actually, I uh, declared that I'm not intending to, to, to be a candidate for the presidency. But people are really obsessed about this. So all their political interpretation is about this. And that's why I am under a severe political attacks. I am under actually a political assassination. People are trying to describe me different than I am. Your father-in-law was president. He's a key figure in the civil war. Your new prime minister has been in power twice before. Can you see why protesters and civilians believe that this is all sewn up? You're all part of the same problem. That's not reform to them. We have been in power for only 10 years. Those who were in power for decades are those we are opposed to and those who, are, who we are fighting for their corruption. Uh, they were the lords of the, of the war and now they are the lords of the state. OK. Your, your critics would suggest that you are in a state of denial. When you are part of a system that left the country like this, you must admit you cannot now be part of the cure. 
Sorry, I don't have to accept your description. We are well aware the, the level of crisis we are in. But the denial is for what we are described and we are not. Gibran Basile, thank you. Thank you.